So uh, last week I was on vacation in Florida, and um, it is kind of funny because uh, a lot of retired priests from Minnesota, they spend their winters in Florida. So, like, you can't swing a dead cat without hitting a Minnesotan priest. And <laughs> so I was out to dinner with two of them who are really good, good eggs. Um, and they're close friends. And one of them, his name is Steve, and he's in his 70s. And even though he's retired, he really loves being a priest, so he uh, helps out in this parish. And he said, oh, I gave my homily uh, for Lent. And I told the people, rather than give up something, rather than focus on change, why not just do something? Like smile more when you're driving. And like... For me, in case you don't know me, that stuff drives me up a wall. Um, but luckily, I have a great poker face, so nobody knows my feelings. Um, and the other priest, yeah, this kind of cracks me up, this other retired priest says, if you think Lent is easy, I think you're doing it wrong. <laughs> and the problem with Steve, he, he, Steve is a, Father Steve is a very good person, but because of family origin issues, uh, to admit any fault, uh, to say, you know, I got to work on uh, being less grumpy, less angry, less selfish, um, to admit any fault in his mind is equated with I'm now unlovable. Um, so it's this really weird thing. So um, he has trouble admitting that he needs to change anything. So he says this, the other priest says, if you think Lent is easy, you're doing it wrong. And so then I took the tactic and I said, Steve, God loves us just the way we are. And he loves us so much, he doesn't want us to stay that way. Um, does that make any sense? Like, <laughs> you, it's not a question. God loves us. But all of us here, we can grow deeper. And how do you take... How do you get to the next level of the interior life? Uh, smiling more, I don't think we'll achieve it. You know, the next level, really, of the great interior life, it demands a certain amount of death, that you have to say no to certain things. Uh, you have to be willing to change. And I mention that because um, like Lent is saying no. Lent is taking this journey of saying, I want to leave certain things behind. That's how we get to a deeper interior life. And that's a theme of journeying. If you take a journey, you leave one place for another. And the readings today, in case you missed it, the first reading and the gospel reading is actually about taking a journey. So start with Abraham. It's the story of Abraham making this decision to take a journey where he leaves his familiar life behind and journeys to the promised land, a whole new way of life. And I, I love this reading only because I love the Hebrew. And in the Hebrew, what God says to Abraham, in English we'll say, God says, go forth. And that's nice. But in Hebrew, you could translate go forth. It's lech lehai, either as go forth or go deep, which I just love. God is asking Abraham, yes, to go forth, but asking us to go deeper. And Abraham is, you know, at 75, is willing to leave his former life behind and travel to the promised land. So the reading is about Abraham simply making a decision to go deep, which means you have to leave something behind. Or uh, the gospel reading is about, once again, deciding to take a journey. And it's a story of the transfiguration, but a little background. The transfiguration, it happens uh, on the Jewish feast of tabernacle, booths. Just in case you're not up on your Jewish feasts, um, the feast of booths, what it celebrates is the 40 years that the people were in the desert making a journey to the promised land. It's a celebration that life is a journey. We're always supposed to be changing and changing and changing and moving closer to the promised land. So on the feast, that really does symbolize taking a journey, making a change in your life. They go up to this mountain, and on the top of the mountain, 
uh, Christ, you know the story, transforms. And he transfigures, I should say. Um, transfigures. In the Greek is pure white light. And Abraham, and sorry, uh, Moses and Elijah are, he's in communion with. The idea is that our prayer life is supposed to transfigure us into this deeper and deeper communion, even with all those in heaven. Uh, so the transfiguration up on the hill, it symbolizes the beginning of the journey to the cross. Because what happens is he gets transfigured on, on top of a hill, and then after that, he makes his way of the cross to Jerusalem to die. So the way of the cross, it begins with the transfiguration, ends with the death and resurrection of Christ. And the reason why he transfigures in front of them is to say, give them kind of a foreshadowing, this is why we take up the way of the cross. This is why we die to our selfishness, our anger, our self-centeredness, whatever it is. Uh, the more and more we die to all of that, the more and more Christ transfigures us. That's why we do the 40 days of Lent. So like with Father Steve, I didn't want to get into... Steve, sorry. Um, I called him Father Steve. Father um, uh, Steve. Yeah, you used to with Steve, sorry. Uh, I have a nickname for him that's not Steve. But anyhow... Um, <laughs> So, Father Steve, um, like, uh, he's afraid to give up anything because he sees it as a sign of being unloved. It's Easter where we try and practice the virtues by doing something. Lent, uh, that's 50 days of Easter. Lent for 40 days, we want to take the next level in the interior life by dying to something. And the transfiguration, you know, it happens on the top of a mountain. And I just want to explain that because I love that imagery too. Um, the top of the mountain is this. Um, just, if you ever read the book of Genesis, where was the Garden of Eden? The Garden of Eden was on top of a mountain. Um, so, like, people from Nebraska, they're going to have a hard time figuring out heaven because um, heaven is called the mountain of God. So, the Garden of Eden was on the top of the mountain. And then on the very center of the garden, as it says, in the middle, keeps using that phrase, in the middle is the tree of life. And God says to Adam and Eve, just telling the story, you can eat from all the fruits of the tree. So, all the fruits of the trees will give you physical life. But the fruit from the, gar the tree of life, that fruit has God's life in it. It'll give you spiritual life. It's not physical food. It's spiritual food. And the deal is, you know, um, Adam and Eve, they can eat from any of the trees, but you, you can't eat from the tree of good and selfishness. Um, that it's actually the word that's used in Hebrew is good and selfishness. Um, so the idea is this. You can eat from the tree of life, but to get to the tree of life, you have to walk by the tree of good and selfishness. And as a little kid, it never really made sense to me, that story. Like, if eating from the, the tree of good and selfishness would cause such trouble, why didn't God put a fence around it? Like, with, like, Cortino wire, maybe pit bulls. Um, but actually, that's not the story. Um, that's just a s silly kid thinking. The idea is this. To eat the fruit in the garden of love, you have to be able to say no to something. Um, you have to be able to say, no, I won't do that, because that's what love demands. How can you have a great marriage if you can't say no to certain things? Love, your yes to love, it also demands that you have to say no to certain things. That's what, what walking past the tree of good and selfishness means. There's just some things I won't do. Does that make any sense? So, um, anyhow, getting back to the mountain. So, all through Scripture, you have this idea of the top of the mountain. Uh, can we get to the top of the mountain? So the transfiguration happens on the top of a mountain. It's this image of, oh, the, this is a journey to the mountain of God. And when Christ dies, where does it happen? On top of a mountain. In fact, the mountain is called and looks like a human skull, Golgotha. 
It means Christ has conquered uh, death. And on the top of that mountain, it says, Christ, when he's on the cross, says that he keeps repeating, he's in the middle. He's in the middle of two other people. He's in the middle of the garden. The cross is the new garden of Eden. Christ is the fruit of the tree of life. Does that make any sense? But the idea is this. Um, to get to the tree, the, the cross, uh, to Christ, you have to be able to say no to certain things in our life. So during Lent, um, we take this journey where we move away from our former life like Abraham and we go deep. We go to the next level. And with our prayer life, what we're really hoping is that we get transfigured more into the image of love. God bless Father Steve that smiling more will not achieve this. Dying to selfness or anger or any of those petty things, that gets us to the top mountain. What we're preparing ourselves for is the garden of love. And so together, let us stand and profess our faith. <laughs>